Hey everyone, this is Alex from WarnOffKeys.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own items using Minecraft plugins. Before we start, I want to quickly mention that I'm going to be making my own server live here on YouTube. So if you're interested in watching how that works, as well as interact in public beta testing, head over to BlockBlast.net. It should send you to a page like this one, where you can join the Discord server for more information. So here I have this item creator utility, which is a utility I wrote back when I used to run my own servers, and we'll be diving into this later on in the video. But I want to first show you the default way to create items, just so you know how to use it in case you're not interested in using this utility. So under my commands folder, I'm going to make a new class here, and I'll be using the command handler that I covered in a previous video. If you prefer not to use that, then go ahead and create a basic command like you normally would. So here I'm going to name this sword because this command is going to give me a diamond sword. And within here, I'm going to create a constructor. So public sword. And then I'm going to create a new command by saying new command base. I'm going to pass in sword. And because we're giving an item to a player, we need to ensure that this is going to be a player so we can pass in true here. Now we have to override our two methods. The first one is public boolean on command. We can then pass in our command sender and then our arguments array. And for now, we're just going to return true. So this is pretty standard for the previous video where we covered how to create our own custom commands. And the second method we have to override will be the usage. So I can say public string get usage. And this will just return the correct way to use it. In this case, just forward slash sword. And then within our command here, we now need to gain access to the player from the sender. And we know that this is a player because we're specifying player only is true. So I can say player, player equals cast of player from sender. And now that we have access to the player, we can go ahead and give them an item. So let's go ahead and create an item first. I could say item stack item equals a new item stack. And within here is where we provide information about this item. The first thing we have to provide is a material, which is the type of item it's going to be. So I could say material dot, and this is an enum where we have a bunch of different options based off of all the different types of items and blocks in Minecraft. So I'm looking for a diamond sword. I'll specify that here. And now item stack is working just fine. However, we have additional options we can pass in, such as the amount. So if we want to give them 10 swords, we can do that, as well as the data. So here we can pass in byte zero. And so for different colored wool and other things like that, you can pass in different data values here. Now in this exact example, we only need the diamond sword because we don't need to give them access to 10 diamond swords. That obviously doesn't make sense. And now that we have created this item, we can actually do some changes to it. So we can add enchantments, we can set the amount, we can set the type so we can change it. We can also get something known as the item meta, which is going to give us information and abilities to control the name as well as the lures or the text on that item. So I could say item meta, meta equals item dot get item meta. Now this could be null, so we want to make sure that meta is not equal to null. And then from here we can say meta dot set display name. And then I'm going to say hello world. And one thing to keep in mind is that color codes will not work by default. You have to translate those with chat color .translate color code, as we've seen in previous videos. However, I'm going to show you an easy way to do this when it comes to using the item creator utility later on in the video. So for now, we're not going to have any colors, but we do have a display name here. We could also say meta.set unbreakable is true. And we have other options as well, such as the lore right here, which requires a list of strings. So I'm going to create a list right here. The type of string will say lore equals a new array list. Then you can add things in manually here. So I can say test and I can copy this a couple times, test three and test two. Now, obviously there's a couple different ways you can create an array like this. For example, you could say arrays dot as a list and pass in your strings here. Either one is fine. I'm going to prefer this method here, but it's up to you. Now that we have this lore array list, we can now say meta.setLore and pass in our array list. So now that the lore is updated, we now need to update the meta onto the item. So we can say item.setItemMeta and pass in the meta here. And then after this, we now want to give the item to the user. So I can say player.getInventory. This will give us access to a bunch of things regarding the player's inventory, such as the ability to get the armor contents, get boots, the chest plates, the helmet, we can get an item in their main hand or their off hand, as well as get an item from a specific index of their inventory. And there's a bunch of other options, such as setting an item for a specific index. But what we want is to be able to add an item. 
because this will use the next open spot. And within here, we can just simply pass in our item. So now the next thing we have to do is actually call the constructor of this class by initializing a new instance within our on enable method. So here I can just say new sword. And now I can go ahead and build this plugin. All right, so now I'm inside my test server here. And if I do forward slash sword, it's going to give me a diamond sword where the name of it is hello world. And we have the strings test, test two and test three underneath. We also see that it's unbreakable. So this is the default text formatting for the name and the lures. And of course you can change that by adding in your own color codes, but this is working and we do have an item being given to our user now. And so the last thing I want to show you is how you can use this extra utility here that I created when I owned my own servers. And this makes it much easier to not only create, but to modify your own items to translate color codes automatically and other things like that. Now, typically most source code on the channel is going to be only for YouTube members, but because this is such a large utility, I didn't want to show every single detail of how to write it. So you can find a link to this within a source bin link in the description down below. So once you're there, you can select all this code and copy it and then go ahead and paste it in, but make sure you add in your own package because of course that'll be different for you than it is for me. So now that we have this, basically you can pass in any material or any existing item stack, as well as data values that could be ints or bytes for different colored wool or other things like that. Once you have your item, you can set the name very easily by just passing in a string and by default, it will automatically color it. Now, if you've been following this series, you might be familiar with this message class here, where we have some static methods that just simply send some messages. I've gone ahead and added the color functionality into its own method here, which I am then calling on the send method. This way we can easily color certain messages without having to actually do everything manually. And we need to do that because we see this right here. So this color is a Boolean and by default, because we're overloading this method, we're going to pass in true. And if you don't want something colored, you can then pass in false specifically. So essentially by default, this will color any name you try and set it. Scrolling down, you have a get and set types as well as get and set for the amount. Here we can update the data values. We can set if something's unbreakable or not. We can set certain flags for the item. We can also do some useful things when it comes to the lures, such as the ability to clear the lures, to set the lures from an array of strings rather than an array list. So that might be easier for you. You can also set a lures with an array list if you want, as well as add individual lures by passing in a single string. You can also fetch the lures with these two here, as well as an easy way to add different enchantments, as well as of course, getting and setting the item stack and getting the name. So obviously most of these methods are very self-explanatory, but let's go ahead and use this utility here inside this instead of creating our own item. So I'm going to hover over everything inside this command aside from our player, and I'm going to comment it out. I could then create a new item. So item creator item equals new item creator. We can pass in material dot diamond sword. And then here we can say item dot set name. We'll just pass in hello world. And we'll use and a at the start of this to color it in a light green. I can then say item dot add lore and C test. I can copy this. We'll have tests too. And then item dot set unbreakable as true. And then here we can say player dot get inventory dot add item and pass an item dot get item stack. So this is a much easier way to do all this functionality than we have right here. We're avoiding null checks, which are done behind the scenes. We now have color codes right here built in, so we don't have to do those manually. We also can just pass in our own individual strings or an array of strings if we wanted, instead of creating an, a new array list here. So this is a much cleaner and easier way. And now that we have this utility here, you can actually edit this and build onto it to add in your own functionality for your own use cases. So let's go ahead and build this again. So now I'm back in my test server. And if I do forward slash sword again, it's now going to give me a different sword. But here we see that we have actual color codes and everything is not italicized like it is by default. Aside from that change, everything is the same. And it's actually less code for us to write now because more of the work is done for us behind the scenes from the utility.